Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining me today. My name is Dmitry Vinik, and I welcome you all to the next episode of the DIFF podcast. And today I have a pleasure of speaking with Nicola Corti, but I'll let him introduce himself first. So, yeah. Hi, everyone. Thank you very much for joining us on the show. My name is Nicola Corti. I'm a software engineer on the React Native team. Uh, yeah, and I'm super excited to tell you a little bit about myself, like what do I do, and a little bit about open source, I guess, right? Fantastic. Yes. As, as uh, some of you know who follow Meta Open Source, we actually just started publishing Meet the Developer Mobile Edition blogging series. So I'm very interested in mobile development these days. And I believe Nicola, Nicola has a great experience in mobile development. And I'd like to tell from you right now what your journey was like into mobile development. Yeah. So... I would say that my journey in mobile started like, well, several years ago. I always uh, used to love Linux. So I literally started using Linux on my, the first personal computer I had. And, and yeah, like, you know, I always liked do a little bit of programming and so on. And then as, uh, you know, mobile phones got released like iPhone and so on, uh, there were like no real alternatives to let Linux run on mobile. And then at a certain point, um, Android got released. And I felt like, oh, whoa, this is Linux on phone. And I want to work for that. So I started learning how to do Android apps and, and so on and so forth. And then I kept on being involved more and more in Android development. I landed my, my first job uh, in a startup as, a, as an Android engineer. And then I basically moved uh, in Europe in several countries. As, a, as an Android engineer, again, focusing on developing apps. And honestly, there is nothing uh, that drives me more than uh, the idea of writing code that ends up in, in the pocket of millions of users around the globe. So I really feel empowered when I see that, oh, the user is, is running one app and the app is powered to the uh, with the code I wrote. Amazing, amazing. Yes, that's uh, definitely an exciting thing to see that you are very like consumer fa facing. The the things you do matter, and you can see them in action. You can actually use them your, uh, on your own, right? The dog fooding, as they would call it. So that's definitely a great experience. But you mentioned Android and Linux before that. It seems like you have this uh, narrative of open source throughout your career. Can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, absolutely. So again, uh, I really loved open source since I discovered this this idea. Like the fact that you can actually write code, share it publicly, uh, and get feedback on your code from others, get someone else helping you and improving it, or get the code that someone else wrote and improve it and make it better is always something that, um, yeah, I found it fascinating. I found it that uh, yeah, you can write great code, but together we can do something better. And some of the biggest open source projects, again, like Linux or others, are actually developed by millions of developers around the globe. So, yeah, I can say that I always felt, uh, yeah, so much driven by doing open source. And I always tried to search for opportunities, uh, like meeting other developers, starting new projects together with others. Open source was always like a recurring topic in all the jobs uh, that I had the opportunity to to do in in the past years, and and yeah, then finally I I landed on on the React Native team, which uh, as you probably know is one of the biggest project on GitHub, and I have the opportunity to work uh, full time in in the open source ecosystem, which is which is awesome. Of our listeners who are not familiar with, with what React Native, while it is popular, you know, I, I I like not to make assumptions of some folks might not know. So how would you, you know, define React Native in simple terms? Yeah, so uh, as as I briefly mentioned before, React Native is a framework for developing cross-platform mobile applications. So it allows you to use all the concepts that you learned. Uh, in the React space, so in, in the web space, and translate them into, into mobile. So essentially, starting from a React application, you can create uh, Android and iOS application. Great. So I, as, you, as you mentioned, uh, React Native is now used on so many different devices and platforms. Uh, I believe uh, last year, if I'm not mistaken, maybe even the year before, 
uh, React Native has published a blog about the multi-platform vision where, yes, they are now targeting desktop applications, AR, VR, uh, and, and more. So again, it, it's great to see a, product, a project like that growing and expanding, you know, to, to shift kind of away from meta-specific work you've been doing. I believe you are also a Kotlin expert from the Google Developer Experts, right? How yeah, does it that's correct. With your over, overall uh, work of the current work and internally and also outside of Meta. Yeah. So if you were to ask me what's my favorite programming language, the answer will be necessarily Kotlin. Oh. Um, so uh, I'm a big fan of it. I've been involved in the language since before it was released uh, as as a stable. Um, yeah, and I mean, uh, for those of you who are not aware. Uh, Android development historically always happened in uh, with Java. Uh, Java is uh, quite of an old programming language, and especially on Android, the versions of Java that you were allowed to use got stuck um, for, for a long period of time. So you could not use a lot of the nice features that more evolved and more like newer programming language called could use. Uh, in this space, JetBrains uh, developed the Kotlin programming language, um, which is compatible with, with anything that runs on the JVM. So you can uh, mix uh, Java and Kotlin code as you wish and introduces a lot of, a lot of features that were missing in Java and makes writing code so much of a pleasure. Um, because it's so expressive, it's so compact, it's so really nice to write. Uh, I've been developing static analyzers uh, and generally tools that uh, help help developing this this language. Uh, I've been also contributing a little bit in the compiler, uh, like really small things, but. Uh, yeah, I've been highly involved in the in the Kotlin community. Um, I, I I really like like this language and and also within react native we are actively using uh using this language um specifically all of our build code is written in kotlin so whenever you run a command uh like react native run android that runs some kotlin code under the hood uh we are also looking into uh migrating a little bit of the core of react native we have some kotlin code in it uh but for historical reason there is a lot of java so we are like slowly uh moving from java to kotlin and we are also uh updating our website mm -hmm. to be bilingual uh, and this, uh, again, I want to point out that this is a, a community-driven effort. So we do, uh, at the time of recording, we, we, we do have an issue uh, on the, um, like a GitHub issue on the website uh, of React Native, where you can subscribe and you can ask to get a page assigned to you. Uh, and there is a list with all the pages that contains only Java code, and you can say like, hey, I want to do this page. Uh, and then you would be responsible of migrating that page to use both Java and Kotlin code. When you do little thing or something that's like even, a, let's say, documentation change, you really feel like more empowered. You feel like you went through this whole pull request, submission, uh, merge process. You're now a contributor to some extent. And to that point, I'd like to actually hear about your podcast because I believe that's one of the ways you kind of spread the word about tech. And uh, yeah, if you could talk about that a little bit. Yeah, um, I'm glad you asked. So I'm running a podcast. It's called The Developer's Bakery. The idea behind the podcast is to have a place where I can allow open source maintainers uh, or authors of tools to have a space where they can tell what they're doing, present their project, um, and tell us tell us a little bit of story behind it. So I thought like, hey, there is a lot of people that I would love to meet, and I would love to get to know them. I would love to know what they're doing, how their project started, and what are the challenges behind it, and so on. How about I just invite them to, to speak and to tell me, like, to tell us why they even started the project, how it started, and so on. So thank you so much for your time today. I'm great we connected. I'm glad we connected. And I hope everyone enjoyed this conversation as much as I did. So thank you so much. 
Thank you very much for having me. It was a pleasure and keep up the, the great work with the podcast.